what you're looking at on my screen now is the Sage 300 login. Right now, this version is running on my desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. If I logged into the desktop version here, it would look you know, much like you're used to seeing. It would look very familiar to you. Logging into the web screen, you see a little differences. The first thing you notice right off the bat is that I've got some, some information that popped up for me that's kind of BI looking information. So these are widgets. And in this version, as well as 2018, currently these widgets are a little configurable by us in that we can come in here and edit settings. And you'll actually see that I did this. I had to edit settings in, in this widget particularly because this is sample data and it's all in year 2020. And when I logged in, it thought I was in year 2017. It didn't show anything on here. They were just nice little blank forms. So I could show you nice information. I had to go tweak the settings just a little bit. And I can also tweak what I'm going to show. So as a user, if they have access to these, they might wanna see the top vendors, the top customers, uh, vendors with expiring discounts. So you can see different information. In future versions, we will be able to add things to these widgets. But in the current version, Sage has supplied these choices and these are the only choices we currently have. So the reporting from the web screens is going to mostly use the, uh, uh, the Sage Intelligence Reporting Cloud. Um, you'll see it abbreviated in different places as SIRC. And that's just a cloud version of being able to pull down the data versus a local version of getting it, say, through um, uh, Crystal Reports. So kind of cool, kind of have some information on here that, that I can see. Um, we'll also see all of our menus, and you'll see that pretty much everything, almost everything you can do in the desktop, you can do here in the web screens. So, for instance, let me go ahead and close these close that widgets down. So if I wanted to go in and enter a customer, I'm going to go launch an AR customer screen. Now, when I pulled up a customer, the first thing you'll see is, is I have a note up here. So notes is one of the new features. So it's in both the desktop and the, the web screens, but you'll see the web screens in here and I, and I might wanna create a new note. When I create notes, we can create notes for customers, for items, for vendors, and we can say what time frame this goes on. So I might want this note just to show during Ron's birthday. Well, now I might want to uh, do some other task like, Oh, I don't know, I might wanna go run a report. Um, so let's go to accounts payables. Uh, let's do an aged payables report. So when we're working in the web screens, one thing that you'll notice is I'm really only seeing one screen at a time. And that's because uh, these web screens were all written to be uh, responsive apps. And what that means is a responsive app is it means it scales to whatever type of device you're using. So if I'm using a tablet, it would scale to a tablet device. If I'm using a phone, it should be appropriate for a phone. On a desktop, so I've got a nice big desktop here, I would have the ability to see lots of information, but it's still showing me kind of one screen at a time. But I opened customer maintenance and I've opened the widgets and I've opened um, this aged payables report, uh, all of those are uh, really still out there and available. So I'll show you that in a second. All right, so there's my payable summary report. And you'll notice these reports look a lot like your Crystal reports. So, um, because it's using Crystal to feed this. So reports that you change in the desktop system will also be changed here in the live system or in the web system. So now I've got a report up. I might wanna jump back to this customer. I might wanna jump back to the detail report that didn't print. I might not wanna see that anymore because it didn't print. So I'll just click on the little X and close that one out so I don't get back to it. These are handy dandy little shortcuts that allow me to navigate around. Um, everything that you're going to see in these screens are really designed around being able to 
or, or possibly having something that touches the screen. So for instance, when I enter a number, uh, I usually hit enter off of everything to, to get me off of that rather than tab. Tab will sometimes work, but enter will always get you off the screen. But when I wanna insert something new, I don't hit the insert button anymore. There, there will be a button on here that says, hey, create a new record, okay? And if I wanna save, there'll be a button down here to save. So everywhere where there were keystrokes that pop something in, there's usually something that I can touch to get me to that information. Uh, when I'm navigating, I can still add columns here, but now I click on this edit columns button. That allows me to edit and, and determine what columns I want on here. So for instance, if I want, oh, and things that I've selected are, all get bunched together. So for instance, if I go down here and select user and apply, if I get back in here and I look at that, user's no longer at the bottom. And that's because I checked it off and it bundles everything I checked up here together. If I want user to be further up, instead of dragging these columns on this grid, you see this little grippy, there's a little, uh, uh, eight little dots here, these little ellipses, um, those, are, those are little grippers. So if I click on that, I'll be able to drag that user up there and, and move them. It's much faster than actually dragging the fields across the columns. Um, so that makes it kind of handy dandy. And now users is in here. You will notice in this version, um, these, these finders, um, they're fairly effective. We, we only have search, we only have starts with and contains, which it turns out that uh, we have very few customers that use anything but starts with and contains um, for the search ca characteristics. We are somewhat limited on what fields we can choose here, um, a little bit more so than what we were before. But for instance, if I wanna see Ron Black, I hit R up, oh, you know what? He doesn't begin with Ron because we're so formal that we entered him as Mr. Ronald Black. But you'll notice that I can't expand this form. So right now, this finder only shows five rec records. Um, that's something that we expect. We expect the navigation that allows you to forward and back on this form. So there's a, a page forward and page back. But right now, this the finder grids are not expandable. Um, we're missing the forward back buttons on some of these forms. Now, if I entered a note, so I entered a note on Ronald Black. Let me go in and just enter an order for Ron Black. Since I put a note on his screen, if I go create an order for Mr. Ronald Black, I should really see that note. Some customers are really gonna love notes and some customers aren't. So when I enter a customer like Ronald Black, I see, these notes, hey, remind Ron it's his birthday. Um, so I can get rid of that note. Um, if I had the privilege, and evidently I don't, I could also dismiss that note. Um, so notes can be temporary or notes can be permanent. Notes might be something on a, on a line item where I enter an item that says, don't forget with this item, you also need to order this item or with this item it needs special processing, or this item needs six weeks of lead time, tell the customer. So notes could be very handy, or if you never put anything in here, notes could be very annoying because you'll be closing this window every time you open something that has a note. So you'll be doing a lot of closing that window. But it's pretty cool functionality. Um, you know, we like it. Uh, you'll also notice things on this screen uh, that have been added in here to improve navigation. For instance, in uh, the initial release, when you went into order entry, you had to scroll down for pages because everything was exposed. And what they did was they collapsed these screens. So if I click on this little full, this expand button up here, it'll expand out the ship via and the ship to address and some other things. By default, I have it collapsed. And if I collapse it, it's more usable, more user-friendly, okay? I don't have to scroll through as much stuff. So if I never get in here to enter shipment details, um, I don't need to have that expanded. 
And you'll notice that more in different screens, some screens more so than others, have a lot of things that are shrunk down. That's what this expansion button is. Um, you'll also see on the import that I can import and export. Uh, another button you'll see on here is customize. So another cool thing about this screen is I can customize it. So if I go in here and I'm gonna create a new customization, so I'll create a, one called test one. And in test one, uh, I might get rid of something that I don't want somebody to see. Like maybe I don't want them to have the delete button. So I would find the delete button and uncheck that button. I can also change a label. So for instance, I might wanna click on here instead of create new, um, I might wanna call it create something. So now it changed, if you look up here, it changed my create new button to say create something. So if I call purchase order something other than purchase order number, I can now change that label to whatever. I can save that into a profile and then give certain people those profiles. So there are certain people that I might not want to have certain uh, privilege. For instance, if I never want people creating an invoice when, you know, from order entry, um, I could just get rid of it off the screen. Okay. Um, so that's kind of new, cool functionality. Um, also, uh, you know, very functional for the web. If I'm exposing, I might expose some of this functionality to customers or users who are getting in and doing some of their own management of certain things. Um, maybe not in, you know, I don't have any good examples of that, but because they're web-based, um, you may be exposing them to users who want to have very limited access. And the privileging system, if privileges don't exist for a particular field, this is one way that you can use to modify the screens without doing any modification. So, um, so that's pretty cool stuff. Again, we like it. So, so I, I created this test one customization. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And when I get out of this, see mine went back to create new because I haven't assigned that customization to anybody. So I didn't assign a profile to my user. So even though I just made that right now until I assign that profile, nobody has that profile. All right, we've got some other buttons up here. So we've got this link button where I can add common reports I use or custom reports. So if I click on this add link, I can browse to my reports folder and put a report out there and it'll show up right here in my in my links so that I'll be able to quickly get to reports or custom reports that I want to get to. The finder is is kind of cool if you're looking for stuff you might want to search on a purchase order number you might want to search on other values in here. So we've seen the notes as well and again uh, when creating notes you can create notes for customers vendors and items. So one more thing that I wanted to show you that's in the desktop and it's in this, is if I go to an accounting transaction, so a batch, so I'm gonna do an invoice entry. So when I'm entering an invoice, I can create a new batch and now enter a new item here. So one thing that you'll notice in the new version in both, again, desktop and regular, is that from within the batch, um, I can go ahead and, and post the batch from inside of the batch. So uh, this transaction is saved. It's on to, to letting me pick a new transaction. If I'm done with that batch, you know, I can go see you know, all the transactions I've put in. If I'm completed, if I'm not adding any new entries into this batch, Um, then my post button will become available. As soon as it finishes refreshing, I can post right from here. Um, the other piece of that puzzle, so I'll go ahead and post this guy, is I also see up here that from my invoicing, I have a menu up here that has my invoice batch list. Uh, so if I wanted to, uh, for instance, get right to my 
my invoice batch list, I can just click up here and, and navigate right to it. And on the invoice batch list, I have a post all button. So I can go ahead and, and approve my, my items that I want to approve. And now just post all. And it will post all of those batches. So again, that functionality is also available on the desktop. So you can just go approve, you know, uh, arrow down through here and, and tap, 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 or space, 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 space to approve them all and then post all. And that's available also on the payable side um, and on the GL side. All right, that's kind of the ground that I wanted to cover. A quick introduction to the web screens. Thank you very much, and you guys all have a good day.